Hello everyone, this is Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. This is part one of the crochet tutorial for the Summer Rose Afghan. This is a crocheted cross stitched afghan and this video is sponsored by Lion Brand Yarn. So a special thank you to Lion Brand who sponsored this video and who also provided the yarn for this afghan. So let's get started and I'll tell you everything you need to know to make this afghan. Now Lion Brand has put this afghan into a kit and I'll have the link, you can just click that link and go right to Lion Brand's website where everything is right there for you to purchase everything together. So wonderful that Lion Brand has done that. But let me go over what you're going to need if you just want to go purchase your yarn. Now when I designed this afghan, I could not find just one type of yarn with all the colors I wanted. So I chose three different Lion Brand yarns that work beautifully together. And I'll show you all three styles of yarn that I'm using. And I'm gonna tell you everything you need to make this afghan. First, we're gonna start with the big pound of love. This is the Lion Brand's yarn. It's beautiful, it's soft, it's big, it's squishy. And you're going to need three skeins of color number 099 antique white. These are the large 16 ounce skeins. There's 454 grams. There's 1,020 yards, 932 meters in each one of these giant skeins. And it's a four medium weight yarn. It's 100% premium acrylic and it is wash and dryable. So thank you for that Lion brand. So three skeins of 099 antique white. And then the next style of yarn I chose was Lion Brands yarn wool ease. This is three ounces, 85 grams, 197 yards, 180 meters per skein. It's a four medium weight yarn. It's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. This is machine wash and dryable as well. So again, wonderful that these yarns are wash and dryable. So you're going to need one skein of number 140 Rose Heather. Now I lost the label for this color and this is the darker of the rose colors. I'm gonna lay that there. And then you're going to need one skein of color number 104 and this is the Blush Heather. Just a very beautiful light pink rose color. So those are the three colors I used for cross stitching the flower and then I used the two lighter pinks in the border. So that is the Lion brand Wool Ease. Now to get the color greens I need I chose Vanna's Choice. This is a four medium weight yarn. It's 100% acrylic. It is 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 170 yards, and 156 meters. It is wash and dryable. So again, all these yarns work beautifully together. They're all from the same Lion brand products. And then you're going to need one skein of Vanna's Choice in the color number 173 dusty green and that's the lighter green here that I use for the leaves. So those are the colors. That is the yarn you're going to need. And then you're going to need a size J or six millimeter afghan hook. Now you can probably use the 10 inch afghan hook if you have one because you're only chaining 38 stitches. I just used the long one because that's the one I had. You're also going to need a size H or five millimeter crochet hook. You're going to need a yarn needle and make sure it has quite a big hole in the top so you can get that yarn in there for cross stitching. And then you're going to need your scissors. So that is the material list for the afghan. So let's jump right in and let's get started. Now this video is a little bit condensed in some areas, so if you would prefer to have the full written PDF 
pattern. I do have that available for a small fee. I'll put that link in the description box underneath that video if you want the instructions to follow along with the video. It has all the full color uh, cross stitch charts and full color. You don't have to follow black and white symbols. It's very easy to see the colors and just follow those charts. So if you want that PDF, it might help you with this afghan a little bit more. So let's jump right in and let's get this afghan started. To begin our project, I already have my yarn attached to my hook and I am using a 14 inch afghan hook. This is size 10J or 6 millimeter. So I already have my yarn attached to my hook and now we're going to do our beginning chain. We're going to chain 38. You're going to yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. So keep your chains loose because we're going to be working into the back bump and it's easier to get in those back bumps when you have your chains a little bit looser. So that's one, yarn over, pull through, that's two, three, four, continue until you have 38 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my 38 chains made and now we're going to start row one. When we start row one, we're going to be working on the wrong side of our chain. So let me just pull my hook out. When you look at your chain and you turn it over, you're going to see these horizontal bars on the back of the chain, right in the center of the chain. We're going to be working in these back bars of this chain. We're going to skip the first chain and we're going to go into the back bump of the second chain. So count one, two, turn your work and then insert your hook into that back horizontal bar of that chain. You're going to yarn over and pull through that stitch. You're going to leave your loop on your hook. You're going to look for your next chain. Here it is turn your chain, look for that horizontal bar, insert your hook underneath that bar, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and leave your loop on your hook. Find your next chain, turn your work, look for that back horizontal bar right in the center of the chain, yarn over, and pull through. Leave the loop on your hook. Find your next chain, Turn your chain, look for that horizontal bar right into the center back of that chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through. You're keeping your loops on your hook. Let's do it a couple more times. Find your next chain, turn your work to the wrong side, look for that center horizontal bar, insert your hook underneath that bar, yarn over, and pull through keeping your loops on the hook. And when you look at your work, you can see how it puts that beautiful finished stitch on the bottom of your work. And then this helps when you do your border. It's easier to find your stitches very clearly seen here. So let's do it a couple more times. Find your next chain, turn your work, look for that back horizontal bar, insert underneath that bar, that stitch, yarn over and pull through. Find your next chain, turn your work, look for that back bump, that horizontal bar, insert underneath that stitch, yarn over and pull through. So go ahead and continue and I'll meet you when you get to the end of your chain. I'm over at the end of the chain for row one and this is what we call the forward pass where we're putting all of our loops on the hook. So when you get your loops on the hook, you should have 38 loops on your hook. So with Tunisian crochet, if you chain 38, then you should have 38 loops on your hook if you're doing the simple Tunisian stitch. So we're done with our forward pass. Now we're going to do what we call the return pass and we're going to take all of our loops off the hook. So to begin, you're going to take your yarn over the hook, yarn over, and you're going to pull through one loop only. To take the remaining loops off your hook, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops, 
yarn over, pull through two loops, and you're going to continue yarn over and pull through two loops. So I'm just going to work right across the row, taking my loops off, again, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then I just push my loops up the hook as I'm taking them off, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we're just going to work over until we get to the end of the row. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and you're going to work across until only one loop remains on your hook, and that loop will count as the first loop of the next row. A few more to go. Now this row one is your base row. This is what starts forming your pattern. And row two will be your repeat row. So we're almost to the end. And when you get to the end, you have two loops. You're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. And you have one loop remaining on your hook. And this will count as the first stitch of the next row. This will be your edge stitch here. So now we're going to start row two. But when you look at your work again, you can see how working in the back bumps creates that beautiful finished chain on the bottom so you can see your stitches very clearly and it gives it a wonderful look when you come around to put your border in you can really see those stitches clearly so let's begin row two again the last loop on your hook becomes the first stitch of the next row so this is going to be the first stitch so we're going to start into the next vertical strand of yarn so we're working in the vertical strands of yarn across our work so let's begin you're going to skip that edge stitch that first vertical stitch and you're going to insert your hook under the second vertical stitch insert your hook just under that one vertical stitch you're going to yarn over and pull through that vertical stitch you're going to keep your loop on your hook insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull underneath that stitch and keep the loop on your hook insert into the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through that stitch keeping your loop on your hook very easy simple tunisian stitch for our panels insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through that's all there is to it insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through so let's do it a couple more times and then you can continue across insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through keeping your loops on your hook insert under the next vertical stitch yarn over and pull through keeping the loop on your hook so go ahead and continue working in the same manner until you get to the end of the forward pass. I'll meet you here and then we'll take our loops off the hook. I'm over at the end of the forward pass for row two and I have the last stitch remaining. So for the last stitch, we're just going under the top loop only, just under one stitch, yarn over and pull through. So when you look at your work, again, whatever your beginning chain was is how many loops you should have on your hook. So now we're going to take our loops off, and we take our loops off in the same manner with each row. You're going to begin, and you're going to yarn over, and you're going to pull through one loop only. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue with yarn over and pull through two, until all loops are off your hook and one loop remains. So I'm just going to go ahead and work all my loops off, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and just continue across to the end of the row. Work 
we're almost to the end. Yarn over, you're pulling through two, yarn over, pull through two. And when you get to the end, you're going to end with two loops, yarn over, pull through those two loops, and then you'll have one loop remaining on your hook, and this loop counts as that first stitch of the next row. So row two is finished. This is what your work should look like. Now to continue to work your panel, you need to do 200 more rows. So you're just going to click back on the video and repeat row two 200 more times until you get to the end of row 202. So you're doing a basic, simple Tunisian stitch for your panels. Now with this pattern, it does want to curl, so if your panel starts curling, that's perfectly fine. When we put our border on the panels and do our afghan border, it's going to help make that lay flat. So again, just click back on the video, repeat row 2 200 more times, and I will meet you at the end of row 202. I'm over at the end of row 202. This is where we started down here at the bottom, and you can see, yes, it does want to curl up. It just, that's the nature of the beast with this Tunisian stitch. So this is my panel. I marked every 50 rows to help me keep track. It's a pretty long panel. So I'm over at the end of row 202, and now we're going to do a finishing row because we want the top to look the same as the bottom, so we have that beautiful stitch definition here of those top stitches. So let's do our last finishing row. It's worked in almost the same manner. You're going to insert your hook into that next vertical stitch you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through all the loops on your hook. Insert under the next vertical stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook. Insert under the next vertical stitch. Yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And you can see how that beautiful edging is starting to form on your work. So let's continue. Insert under the next vertical stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Insert under the next vertical stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Insert under the next vertical stitch. Yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook beautiful nice edging. So let's do it a couple more times. Insert under the next vertical stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. Insert under the next vertical stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So now with this finishing row, you're only going to do the forward pass because we're finishing our work, so you're only working across the forward pass. So go ahead and continue and work in the same manner. Insert under the next vertical stitch, yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook. Repeat that across to the end of the row and again if you need help just click back on the video and I'll meet you at the end of row 203. I'm over at the end of row 203. I have one stitch remaining, so I'm just going to go under the top loop of that last vertical stitch, yarn over, and pull through all loops on my hook. I'm going to fasten off my work. When I fasten off my work, I usually chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, whoops, I have a knot in my yarn, grab my yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So when you look at your work, yes, it's going to curl, but you can see how beautiful that edging is on your work. So very, very pretty. 
So here is our panel. Our panel is already finished. It's just a plain, simple Tunisian simple stitch. So now what you're going to do is you're going to make three more panels exactly like this one. So you can choose to make one panel and then cross stitch your design and do them one at a time. Or you can choose to do what I did and I made all four panels first and then I went back and cross stitched. Now with this pattern I find it is easier to cross stitch onto the panel before I put my border on. That way you're not getting confused of where your stitches are when you're following that cross stitch chart. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through how to cross stitch on Tunisian crochet. So let me grab my panel that I already cross stitched. So here is one of my panels. Now I cross stitched it before I put the border on. So when I cross stitch my panels, I cross stitch through the top two stitches. Let me zoom up. Now when I cross stitch, I work under these horizontal strands of yarn here. You'll see two horizontal strands of yarn and I work under these two strands of yarn and I keep my stitches in between the fabric. So what I mean by that is when you turn the panel over you do not see much of the stitching on the back. Sometimes I do sneak through uh, but that's normal but most of the cross stitching is in between the layers of the Tunisian stitch itself. It's a pretty thick pattern, but as you can see, most of my stitches cannot be seen on the back of my work. And I just think it gives it a more beautiful look when you don't have all that stitching and ends going uh, on the back side of your work. So that is how I cross stitch. Now, if you have your own preferred way of cross stitching, then you use your preferred method of what you're more comfortable with. So again, everybody has their own way of doing things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I get started and then I'm going to show you a copy of the chart so you can either uh, pause the video as you're working on your cross stitch and just look at the video while you're cross stitching to follow that chart or I do have uh, the PDF available for a small fee and that link will be in the description box underneath this video where you'll get the complete written instructions, you'll get the charts, the codes for the colors and all that in a PDF if you choose that you would prefer to have that PDF. So okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get started on our cross stitch. So you're going to have to grab your colored yarn. I give you all the information in the beginning of the video of what colors you need. Now again, with this pattern, this pattern is specifically made for the colors that I chose. So if you choose to change the colors, then you may not have enough yarn for the cross stitching if you choose to maybe say make all your panels the same colors I, I reverse the colors so that affects how much yarn you're going to need so if you want to do the panels differently you may have to purchase more yarn so just wanted to make that clear. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to determine where to start your cross stitching by looking at the chart and then looking at your panel. And then I'm going to show you how I cross stitch and what I do. And again, this is my method. If you have a different method for cross stitching on Tunisian, then please by all means use your method. So grab your yarn. You're going to need your greens. You're going to need your pink and you're going to need a yarn needle and you're going to need your scissors. So grab your supplies and then we'll get started on cross stitching. So now I'm going to begin cross stitching my panel. So here is my panel and every vertical stitch on the panel equals one square on the chart. So I count my edge stitches. So you're counting both sides. You're counting this edge stitch and this edge stitch as a square on the chart. So let's take a look at the chart. So here is my chart. Now, the only thing with this video is I already did my two panels 
with the dark green. So now I'm working on the panel where I reverse my greens and I'm using different pink. So my coloration is going to be just a little bit different. So what you're going to do, let me put this chart here like this. So you're going to be making two panels using this chart with the dark colors, with the dark green for the main color of the leaves. And then you're going to make two panels where you're going to reverse these colors. And again, all that information is in the instructions in that PDF if you would prefer to get that PDF. So what we're doing is we're taking these two sections where I did one section and then I flipped it and did it again where the roses are on opposite sides. And then we butt this together down here. So I did make some corrections on my chart here after I made the chart. So uh, the new chart will be correct. But what we're doing is we're going to repeat this section four times down our panel length. So you're going to have a total of eight of the larger rosebuds going down your panel, but you're repeating this section four times down your panel. So when you look at your chart, again, I'm going to be using the opposite colors because I'm doing my two panels that are reversed. I, and I don't want to confuse you, but I didn't even think when I was cross-stitching my panels. I waited for the last panel, and again, I decided to reverse those colors. So I have my blocks numbered. There's 38 blocks across the panel, and then the panel will be 202 rows long. So the first thing you have to do is figure out where you want to start your panel. Now I start up here. Now you can choose to start the leave because the leave is easier. You have more stitches to weave in. When you're doing these smaller sections, it's kind of hard to get that yarn started because you don't have many stitches to get that yarn under in order to start. So when you're looking at your chart, again, we have 38 vertical stitches across the panel and we have 38 blocks. So I count it over and when you count over, you count over 16 stitches and then I see I have four blank blocks and then I'm starting in the fifth row down. So you're going to start this first stitch here to cross stitch in the 16th vertical stitch across by the fifth vertical stitch down. So let me show you how to get started. So you're going to just pull this up and you're going to look at the top of your work and you're going to count 16 vertical stitches. You're starting with this edge stitch. Make sure you count this first edge stitch or your design is not going to be in the correct position. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Once you get to the sixteenth stitch, you want to count down to the fifth vertical stitch. So you're going to count the top row, one, two, three, four, and five. This is the stitch that you want to start cross stitching in. So I see that I have, this is my starting stitch, which is right here. So you have two stitches on top, four on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of keep my finger here. And I know I have four stitches below, so I'm coming down to the row below. And I'm just going to insert my hook right through some of those stitches and then I'm going to come right up underneath this stitch where I want to start. So this way it's kind of weaving my yarn in through to give it some security to start cross stitching. And then when we do the next row underneath, it's going to lock these stitches in place. So let me see if I can get this up a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my chart and try to do it this way so you can see what I'm doing to make it a little clearer. And again, my colors are going to be reversed because I already made the dark panel, so I'm reversing my colors. 
So again, you went over 16 vertical stitches and you went down to the fifth stitch down, which is right here. So now we're getting ready to begin cross stitching. So you're just going to take your yarn needle and you're going to come up and you're going to go under the two horizontal strands of yarn in between those vertical stitches. You're going to insert your needle from top to bottom just under the two horizontal bars and bring your yarn needle down through. And when you're working across your work, you're going to do all your stitches across and then you're going to come back. So we have two stitches. So we're going to go up and we're going to come over and go under those two horizontal bars and you're just making that first angle of your cross stitch. So you see you have two stitches. We made our two stitches. Now we need to finish them and come back. So take your yarn needle, you're going in the opposite direction and you're coming back and you're going under those same two horizontal bars and you're going to finish that cross stitch. Now if you pull too tight, then just take your yarn needle and just make those stitches so they look nice if you have to take your yarn needle and pull that bottom stitch out just get it so it looks really a nice cross stitch and then come over and do your next stitch so now i know that this is my last stitch so before i pull that needle through i look on my chart and see where i need to be for my next stitch so i need to come down one row and over one so instead of pulling my needle through i'm going to take that yarn needle and i'm just going underneath those two bars and i'm going to angle my hook and i'm coming over one stitch and underneath those two horizontal bars so you can see how I'm taking my hook right underneath and to the next position to start that next row pull your yarn needle through you're going to finish your top two stitches you can see how they're finished so now I'm looking at my chart and it shows I need to make four stitches across so now you're going to take your yarn needle up and you're going catty corner across that vertical stitch. You're going to take your yarn needle from top to bottom through those two horizontal bars. And again, you're keeping your stitches in between the fabric, not going to the back. And we're going to do that four times across. One. Two. And when you see that yarn underneath, you try to go under that strand of yarn where you started. You can see it going through. Just grab those two horizontal bars and try to go under that strand of yarn to secure it. One more stitch to go. So we worked our four stitches across. Now we're coming back. And I'm sorry because this light pink is really light and it's not showing up as nice as I want it to. And then you're just going to work your way back over those four stitches. And if you're new to cross stitching, you'll get your own method and learn how to do it to where you're comfortable. So now before I pull that last stitch through, I'm going to look at my chart. I need to make one stitch underneath this end stitch. So instead of pulling my yarn needle through, I'm just going to come right down underneath those two horizontal bars into the next row because I need to make one cross stitch here. So there I'm just going to pull down through. And then I like to just use my fingernails or my fingers and just make sure they look nice. And then I'm going to work one cross stitch here. So now when I look at my chart, I see, okay, I need to be clear over here under this one. So what I do is I do not like to fasten off unless I absolutely have to. The nice thing is when you can do all the same colored stitches with one strand of yarn, it really helps to secure your pattern better on your work. So I'm just taking my yarn needle underneath diagonal through and underneath and then I'm going to catch underneath the bottom. You can see the stitch here. And then I'm going to go underneath the next 
a vertical piece of yarn underneath that cross stitch and then I just take my fingers make sure it looks nice and I'm running that yarn underneath this so it blends in and then again I'm over at the last cross stitch but I need to be underneath it here so you're just going to take your hook and run under those two horizontal bars and then you can see you're in the correct position to make that next stitch. So take your yarn needle, caddy corner over that vertical stitch, go underneath the two horizontal bars, and then make your cross stitch. So this part of my little rosebud is finished. So now what I want to do is fasten off my yarn. So you want to weave this end in in and out through some of these stitches to really secure that yarn. So I'm going to try to do this without getting my hand in the way. I'm just going underneath and catty corner through this stitch and then up through the next one. And then I'm just going to run my needle right across these stitches and then down through And make sure it looks nice and then I'm just going to trim my end. So now when you're looking at your chart you'll see the next color has four stitches to be made and again the panel I'm working on now is different than this and I don't have that uh, color chart printed out so sorry about that but again if you're working on your first panel then you're going to be using the uh, medium pink and the light pink so just follow this code using that medium pink and light pink so I'm reversing my colors and again I used a different pink for panels two and four so I'm going to come up and do my four stitches so because I only have four stitches, you're going to have a very short end. So I like to come through the bottom row. I'm going to come through those two stitches and then I just take my hook up through the top of that horizontal bar so it's at the base of that first stitch I need to make. And again, you're only going to have a short end. So just pull it through so it's right there and then this row will secure that end. You're going to work two stitches across. And then we're working two stitches below. So I'm just taking my hook right underneath to get it in the position of that next stitch. So I'm going right down to the base of that next row. And then I use my fingers and tighten that up a little bit, make sure my cross stitches look nice. And if you don't see the side of the stitch, just take your hook, grab that little piece of that corner of that cross stitch and pull it up. So now I'm going to work my two stitches below. And then because there's only four stitches, I really like to take that yarn needle and you can see these little uh, vertical stitches underneath right in the center of your cross stitch. I take my hook right through there and again, it just blends in. And then I like to take my hook and really secure it by taking my yarn needle back up through and just through some of those stitches and then pull it up. And then I'm just going to clip my end off. And again, when you look on the back side of your work, now I have a little spot here that came through on my end. I can clip that off if I want because it's just the end sticking out. So I think I'll just trim that a little bit and get rid of that end. And now we're ready to start our green section. So what I do when I work these long sections of green is I try to use the longest piece of green that I can and I will work from this point, follow it down and just keep going straight down 
until I run out of yarn. And when I run out of yarn, then I come back and I add the leaves. So let me grab my green and I'll show you what I mean. So I have my green and now I'm going to start working my, my green stems of my pattern. So I know that I need to start right under those two pink here. So look at your work. Here's those two pink stitches. And you'll see you have four stitches. One, two, three, four. Four rows down. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle. I'm going to come down and I'm just going to come down four rows. One, two, three, four. I'm bringing my yarn needle right up through those four rows. And then I'm coming right at the base of this row here where I need to start that first stitch. So one, two, three, four. And this helps get that yarn secure because you're going to be working over that end of that yarn. So pull that up. And then you're going to start your first stitch. So here is the first stitch on our chart. And we're going to work that one stitch. Now before you pull your yarn through, look at your chart and you'll see you need two stitches underneath. You need to come down one row and over one. So you're going to come down one row and just angle that hook and get it to the base of the next stitch you want to start. So you're going down one row over one and to the base of that stitch. Pull your yarn needle through. Now when you look at the chart, we need to make two stitches across. And remember, always work all your stitches across and then go back. So we worked our two stitches, now we're going back. And before we work that last stitch, you want to look at your chart. Now we need to come back over and be directly below these stitches. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle. I'm going to come to the top of this last stitch and then I'm going to angle my yarn needle over and bring it over to underneath that other stitch. So we need to come over a row and down to the base of that row to start our next stitch. So when you look at your work, you'll notice here we are and we're right at the base of this stitch here. So now we're going to work this stitch underneath those two stitches. So right here is where we are right now. So work one stitch. And before you finish the stitch, look on your chart. We need to make one more stitch underneath that one. So I can just bring my needle straight down you're going to come through the base of this stitch and then you're going right underneath the horizontal stitches of that next row and you're going to make a stitch directly underneath this stitch. So now before we pull this needle through this last stitch, you're going to look at your chart. We just completed this section, so now we're going to come over here and we need to come over one stitch and one row down. So take your yarn needle, you're just going to come underneath that stitch and you're going to come over one stitch and one row down and pull your yarn needle through. You always want to make sure that your needle is coming out at the base of the next stitch you want to work. So then I just like play around with my stitches, make sure they look good. Now the more you do, the more it's going to look better. When you first get started, it doesn't look like much. So now again, we finished this section here and now we need to make three stitches on top of each other, three rows down. So we're just going to do one stitch. We're going to come down to the row below and do the next stitch. And then one more stitch under that one for a total of three.
Now before I do that third stitch, I'm going to look at my chart and you can see that we have four stitches here. So you don't want to try to jump over. We're just going to keep working down. We're just going to follow what's easiest to do here and then we come back to do these sections. So now we have four stitches here. So we're just going to take our yarn needle. We're going to finish this last stitch and then we need to come over one stitch and down one row. So we need to come over one stitch and down to the base of that next row so we can start our next section of our stem. And again, sometimes you have to take your yarn needle and pull this side of the stitch up when you do those angled stitches. And then I just pull, make sure that has a nice look to my cross stitch, and then I'm going to continue. So again, I'm not going to jump over here. I'm just going to follow this stem down. So now I have four stitches on top of each other to do. So let's do those four stitches. One. Two. three and we're working our fourth stitch. So now before I pull that fourth stitch through I'm going to look at my chart. Now you want to keep it as easy as possible when you're doing your cross stitch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come down and I'm going to work these four stitches here next. You're just going to come over one stitch and down one row and we're going to work these four stitches next. So take your yarn needle. So let me see if I can get this in the view. Now we're coming to this side now so you need to come back to the other side. Just take your yarn needle and you're going to come over one stitch and get your hook right at the base of this stitch here and then pull your yarn needle through. So let me see if I can move this chart to make it easier to see what I'm doing. So we're going to start and we're going to work these four stitches here. Again, you want to keep it as easy as possible and you don't want to be trying to come over here. You want to keep a nice flow to your work. So let's do these four stitches here next. Our, our needle is in position, so we're just going to work four stitches, one on top of each other, straight down. One, two, three, and now I'm working my fourth stitch. So now before I finish my fourth stitch, let me show you where we are. I just am working on this stitch here and now you're going to look at your chart. So if you're confused on what to do next, you're going to keep working in a nice flow. So now we're going to work this long row here. We're going to work one stitch over and one row down. So when you get your fourth stitch made, take your yarn needle and you're going to come over one stitch and down one row. Get that needle in position to where you're over one stitch and at the base of that next row where you want to start. So let's pull that yarn needle through. And now when you look at the chart, just count how many blocks you're going to work those cross stitches. We're going to work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cross stitches across. So let's begin. You're going to just bring your hook over and you're just going to work eleven stitches across and again we're working all of them in the same direction we're only working half that stitch so that's three four 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So it doesn't hurt to double check your stitch count because if you mess up, it's a real pain to rip this out. So always better to double check. Again, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cross stitches we need to make. So two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. And now we're just going to come back across our work. You're just going to take your needle and work the other half of each cross stitch across to where you started. And this is where the longer strand of yarn you can use the better because you're not having a lot of ends. So that's why when you're working these stems down the length of your panel, it's best to go as far as you can. And sometimes when you're working with a really long strand, it's hard because it likes to tangle. So keep it, you know, as long as you can to where it's comfortable working with. So now I have my 11 stitches made. I have one to go, but now I'm going to look at my chart. So what I'm doing is I'm going to continue working down in a nice fluid movement down my work and I'm not going to worry about these stitches here. I'm going to come back and do them later. Now I'm just mainly working coming straight down keeping a nice flow down my work. And then you can see that when you come back and do your leaf, when you do that top leaf, you're working across and then you just come down and meet where you join. So very simple. So, okay, this is where we are. So now when you look at your chart, we need to come over one and work two stitches one row down. So I'm finishing my last stitch and then I see I need to come over one stitch and then I'm going under the two horizontal bars and coming down a row to where I'm at the base of the next stitch I have to work. So looking at the chart, we need to do two across. So we're going to do one and two. And then you're going to come back across and work those two stitches and finish them. And before you finish that last stitch, you're going to look at your chart. Here we are. We need to come down one underneath the end stitch here. So we're just going to come straight down. Take your hook underneath those two horizontal bars in the next row below. And we're coming straight down and we're going to work one stitch. Now before I finish that last stitch, I'm going to look at my chart. This is the stitch we're on. Now we need to come over one stitch and down one row and work two stitches. So I'm just going to take my hook and I'm going to go over a stitch. Underneath those two horizontal bars, one stitch over. And then pull my needle through. And then you can see we're in the position to make our next cross stitch over one stitch and down one row. So again, we're right here, so we're going to work two stitches on top of each other. So let's work the first stitch, one, and then one underneath that one in the row below. So now I notice my yarn is getting pretty short, so I'm going to fasten off here. So what I'm going to do is just take my yarn needle and finish this next stitch. So don't wait until your yarn gets too short to where you can't maneuver those stitches nicely. Just go ahead and fasten off and grab a new piece of yarn. So when I get down to where I don't think I have enough to finish the next section, then I'm going to fasten off. And how I do that is I just weave my yarn needle up through the stitches and try to secure that end under the stitches. Pull it through. Make sure that that cross stitch has a nice look. If you have to pull that piece of yarn down to pull that corner back to make it look nice, 
and then you're going to clip your work. So then what I would do is grab another piece of green and then I would weave it down through and get in position to start the next stitch. So this is how you're going to cross stitch. So let me show you one more section of how I do it. So now what I'm going to do is just show you how I start a new section. So we started our little rosebud, worked down our stem as far as we could. So now I'm coming back up and I'm going to work on this leaf. So you can either count across the top and then down or find a point here of where to start and count over. So I'm going to start underneath. I'm just going to take, here's the top of my leaf. I'm going to follow it over to what I have done so far. So I'm looking and I need to be right underneath the second. You see one and then two. I'm just going to come down here and start counting over. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to find the same spot on my panel. So right here is where I started to count on the chart. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine vertical stitches over. Just put my finger there so I know which one it is. I know that I have four stitches, so I'm just going to come back four, one, two, three, four, insert my needle, and then I'm just going to weave it underneath those stitches. And when I get to that ninth stitch, I'm just going to bring my needle underneath that bottom horizontal bar. And then I'm going to pull my yarn through. And then I'm going to start my first row of four stitches. So I'm just going to work those four stitches across. And again, you're working half a stitch and you're working all the way across however many stitches you need to make. In this row, I need to make four. So now I'm going to come back. And then I'm going to look at my chart. I made my four. Now I have to come over two stitches and one row down. So I'm just going to take my yarn needle. I'm going to come straight down and then I'm going to come over two. And then you just want to make sure your needle comes under that bottom horizontal bar of the stitch where you need to start. So let me pull this through. And then when you look at your work, you can see we're two stitches over. One, two. So you come up to your work and you'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to make seven cross stitches across. So let's begin. And again, you're working half a stitch across. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now we're going to work those seven stitches back across. There's one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and before you pull the last stitch through look at your chart now you can see you need to drop down one row and come over three stitches so again you're going to drop down to the base of the next row below and then just take your yarn needle and go over three stitches make sure your needle comes out at the base of that horizontal bar pull your yarn needle through and then you're ready to begin the next row. So again, you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven stitches. So we're going to work across eleven stitches. And again, you'll notice this is where you should have three spaces that are unworked one, two, three, and then you know your stitches are in the correct place. 
So let's go ahead and work these 11 stitches over. So I have my 11 stitches worked across. Now we need to come back. And I'm sorry my hand is in my way. I am trying to show you, but it's kind of hard to cross stitch keeping my hand out of the way. So I'm just going to work back across those stitches. And if your yarn wants a twist, just kind of turn it so you untwist it. So I worked my 11 stitches across. So now you're going to look at your chart and your stitches are clear over here. So now you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So you need to come over to the sixth stitch and one row down. So I just insert my hook underneath, right in the center of that cross stitch in that little piece of that vertical stitch sticking out. And I'm just going to weave myself over to that sixth stitch. And then I come across five stitches. So I'm just going to pull my needle through because I'm trying to do this by pulling my hand in the wrong direction. So I'm trying to pull this through and I'm used to having my other hand in there. So I'm trying to film it and show you. So we need to be under the sixth stitch. So I pulled it under the first five and now I'm just going to go down one row. So just take your needle down through those two horizontal bars. And then just count over to make sure you're under that sixth stitch. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now when you look at your chart, we need to work four stitches across. So one, two, three, and four. Now we're going to work back across one, two, three, and four. Now my yarn is getting kind of short, but I'm going to see if I can show you how to get up here and start down the other side. I don't think I have enough yarn. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fasten off because I know I don't have enough yarn. So I'm just going through and weave underneath the bottom of these four stitches. I'm going to pull through and then I'm going to weave up through. So I wish I would have had a longer length of yarn but this is what happens uh, if you don't pull enough of yarn off you just fasten off so now let me show you how I join and then connect my leaf to the stem I already made so again when you look at your chart we need to be over here we already did this portion so now we have to do this cross stitch here so I'm just going to weave my yarn down through some of these stitches and then I'm going to come out at the base of this stitch that we need to make so I'm just going to take my yarn needle right up here and I'm just going to bring it down through some of these stitches try to catch the bottom of some of these stitches to secure that end of the yarn And then I'm just coming down through this end stitch here and I need to be underneath it to start that next stitch. So I'm just going to pull it down, bring your needle up underneath those two horizontal bars and keep your end in there so it's nice and secure. And then we're going to start here and make this stitch. 
we're going to just come underneath that last stitch of that row above and work one stitch. Now when you look at your chart, you'll see we need to make one stitch over and down one row. So we're just going to take our yarn needle and we're just going to bring it over one stitch and down one row. And we're going to work one stitch. Now before we finish this stitch, you're going to look at your chart and we need to come down one row and over one stitch again. So we're just going to follow the chart. And sometimes when I work on a chart, if you have access to a printer and you print the chart out, we're working four panels, you can print four charts and then I use a highlighter and you can just cross off the section with the highlighter that you already have done and then that way that helps prevent mistakes as well in case you get confused of where you are. So now we worked our this stitch and this stitch. Now we have to work this stitch so we're in position and we're going to work one stitch. So before we finish that stitch you're going to look at your chart so now we need to come over one stitch and down one row and we're going to work two stitches on top of each other in each row, two rows. So let's come over and get in position to work that next stitch. So we're working our next stitch and then we need to work one stitch underneath in the row below. And as you do this you'll get your own method and your own rhythm of how to do it. So we just made our two stitches. So when you look at your chart, you're going to see we have one more stitch to go and then it should be joined to what you already done. So we're just going to come over one stitch and down one row. And we're going to work one stitch. And then this stitch is going to butt up against the top of this section here. So this is the stitch we're working. And because we're over to the end, I'm just taking my hook down through these stitches and I'm going to secure it under some of those stitches. And then I'm just going to fasten off. So that is the method of how I cross stitch. Now, it takes me at least three days to cross stitch one panel. So you can understand how I cannot show you how to cross stitch the whole complete panel. But I hope this gives you an idea of how to work the cross stitching where just go with the flow and go down as far as you can, even if you want to work that one stem all the way to the bottom and then come back and work the other sections. So let me show you what we've done so far first. So this is what we've done. I showed you how to start your ends, how to follow the chart, how to work those stitches all the way across and then come back. So let me show you the chart again. So now since I showed you how to cross stitch your design onto your panels, I want to show you the cross stitch chart Plus, I want to show you the cross stitch chart code. So let me explain a little bit about what you need to do to cross stitch your panels. We're going to have a total of four panels in our afghan. We're going to cross stitch two panels using this color code and then we're going to cross stitch two panels using this color code. Now we're using the same cross stitch chart only we're changing the colors by using these color code charts here. So let me explain. When you look at your color chart here, you're going to see dark pink, light pink, dark green, and light green. So when you look at this chart, if you're using this chart and following and cross stitching using this video, then when you look at this dark pink here for panels one and three, you're going to use Wool Ease Rose Heather for the dark pink. And when you look at the light pink, you want to use Wool E Blush Heather. When you look at the dark green, you're going to come over here and the dark green on the chart, you're going to use Vanna's Choice Olive Green. 
and when you look at the light green on the chart you're going to come over and use Vanna's Choice Dusty Green which is the lighter green. Now on this chart I did update it and these X's will be where the dark green is so they will be dark green. So now for panels two and four I reversed some of the colors so when you look at the chart and you see the dark pink here you want to look on your color code chart and that dark pink you will now be cross stitching and using the light blush heather that's the lighter pink so you're reversing those colors and when you look at the light pink on the chart you're going to be using a dark rose heather which is a darker than the panel one and three and then when you look at the greens we're just reversing those greens to now where that dark green is going to be cross stitched with dusty green and the light green will now be cross stitched with the olive green so make sure you follow this stitch code so you get the right colors for the panels and if you deviate from this color scheme then you will not have enough of the yarn to cross stitch those flowers on it's specifically made to reverse those colors using these specific colors so if you want to use a certain color combination then you're going to have to buy more yarn so this is the chart again I'm leaving this here if you want to pause the video here then you can use the video uh, for your chart to cross stitch that design and I'll also have that PDF available for a small fee in the description box underneath that video where I'll have a lot more detailed information with the color codes and the stitch charts. So now when you're looking at your stitch chart here, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. So what you're going to do is you're going to start cross stitching and you're going to start at the top and you're going to work these first two sections. And then when you get to this point here, what you're going to do is then you butt the design up and you do this section and when you get to this flower here you're just going to jump back up to the top of the chart and you're going to start cross stitching this section and work these two sections again and when you get down here you can see how you're repeating this top section down here so just work these two sections when you get to this flower you're going to jump back up here and cross stitch this down so that's how you're going to do your panels again four panels two panels will be using this color code chart following this cross stitch chart and then two panels you'll cross stitch using these colors here based on the colors on this chart so that is how you cross stitch your panels now i'm going to actually show you the two panels i have done so far so you can see what i mean by those color uh, being reversed so here is my panel and you'll notice that these leaves this rose has that dark green and then the light green under it and when you do the next panel i reverse those greens and i'm using the light green where the dark green was and the dark green where the light green was now on the second panel i used a darker rose so where the dark rose is i put the light rose the light blush rose and then where the light rose was i come in with a different color rose and use that dark rose heather so we're actually using three different color pinks in this design and we're using two different color greens so this is how I reverse the design just to break up that pattern add a little different dimension to the pattern so that's how you're going to do it panel one panel two and then panel three will be the same as panel one and panel four will be the same as panel two so go ahead and cross stitch your design onto your panels and then we're going to get started by working our border around the panels. So now I have all four of my panels cross stitched. Now I'm only showing two because these are really long and I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're doing here. So once your panels are cross stitched, now we're going to add this simple border around our panels to give it a little more interest to the design. So your panel should look like this one here. So it's cross stitched and now we're going to go up to the top of the panel and we're going to start in the top right hand corner and we're going to start and work this border. So let me move this panel and let's get started. 
To begin our border, we're going to start and we're going to use the Wool Ease Blush Heather. That's the really light pink. And you're going to be using a size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. Now, I already attached my yarn to my hook, so I have that loop around my hook. And you can attach your yarn in whichever way you prefer. I just found this is a nice, secure way to do it. So when you're looking at your panel, you're going to see your stitches coming up the side, and then you're going to see the first stitch that's going this way. So you want to insert your hook underneath the top two loops of that first stitch going across that narrow part of your panel right at the top, and make sure you're at the top. Make sure you don't have it upside down because you want to start in the upper top right hand corner at the top of these flowers. Insert your hook under the top two loops. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. And this gives you a nice secure beginning and know that yarn is nice and secure and attached. So I'm going to work right across the top with you. We're going to begin and chain one. Now I'm just going to let my ends hang and I'll weave them in when I'm all finished with the afghan. Insert back underneath the top two loops of that first stitch. Work a single crochet. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. You have two loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made a single crochet. You're going to chain one skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, and you're going right under the top two loops, work a single crochet. So the repeat across the top is you're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert under the top two loops of that next stitch, work a single crochet. And that is all we're going to do across the top of our work. Chain one, Skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, going under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Again, chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. So now I'm just going to go ahead and work across instead of repeating myself. You get the idea of how to do it now. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. A few more to go and I'll be over at the corner. So we have two stitches remaining. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into that last stitch, work a single crochet. So this is what the top of your work should look like. So now we're getting ready to work down the side of our panel. So we're going to chain two to form the corner. One, two, and now we're going to be working down the side of our afghan. So when you look at the side of your afghan, one side of the afghan, which is the left side, is only going to have one loop. Your other side has two loops. So what we're going to do when we work down this side of the afghan is we're going to go right in the stitch itself. We're going to go right into the stitch, right through the center stitch. We're not going through the loop. You don't want to go through that. You want to go here. 
in between that stitch. So let's go ahead and begin. So let me pull this end out of the way. You're going to insert into that first row end stitch, insert right between the two horizontal bars. Insert right between those two strands of yarn, work a single crochet. So now we're going to start the repeat. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip the next row, insert into the next row end stitch, and again you're going right through the center of that stitch to through those two strands of yarn. Work a single crochet. And this just adds extra security so those stitches don't come out because with that one stitch it's really going to pull. So you want that extra security of going between that stitch and just having that extra strand of yarn. That's why I split my stitch. It's up to you if you don't like that and you just want to go through the top loop, that's up to you. So let's do the repeat again. You're going to chain one. You're going to skip the next row. Insert right in the next row end stitch, right between those two strands of yarn. Work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. And we're going to repeat that down to the last three rows. Chain one, skip the next row end stitch, insert into the next row, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next row, insert into the next row end stitch and again you're going right between those two strands of yarn right in the middle of that stitch. Work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next row end stitch, insert into the next row end stitch and you're going right in the center of the stitch. Work a single crochet and that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and chain one, skip the next row, single crochet into the next row end stitch right in the center of those stitches. Repeat that down the length until you get to three rows from the corner and I'll meet you there and show you how to finish this side of the afghan panel. I work down my length. This is what it looks like. You should work down your panel. And when you get to the end of the panel, we have three rows remaining. So when you look at your work, when you do your next repeat, you'll see that you would have ended here, which means we have one row too many or we're one row too short in order to make this come out correctly. So what we're going to do, and you do this usually with any pattern that when you get to the end and you don't have enough stitches or you have too many, you have to adjust adjust your pattern in order to fit your work. So what we're going to do to end this side of the panel is we're going to chain one, we're going to skip the next row end stitch, and then we're going to work a single crochet two together over these last two rows. So skip that next row, insert into the next row end stitch, yarn over and pull through, keeping that loop on your hook. Insert into that last row and stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And what that does is make your pattern come out correctly because we're just eliminating that last row with that single crochet, pulling that work together and making the design come out. So now we're going to chain two for the corner, one, two, and now we're going to be working across the bottom of the afghan, and yes, it's going to roll, and you just, you know, kind of pull it back. So let me get this piece of yarn out of the way. And when you look at your work, you'll notice how beautiful these stitches are when you're working across that foundation row. And you can really see the top of those stitches instead of just the chain. So working in the back bumps when you first start your panel is why this is so wonderful when you're putting that border on. Your stitches are very easy to see. So we're going right into that first stitch. You'll see those top two loops of that first stitch insert underneath the top two loops of that first stitch, 
work your single crochet. So we're just going to repeat what we did on the top. You're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, and that is the end of the repeat. So I'm going to do it one or two more times. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next. So go ahead and chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next, repeat that across to your corner, and I'll meet you there. I worked across the bottom of my panel. This is what it looks like. The same pattern with the chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next, and it comes out right in the last stitch on the bottom of your work. So now we're getting ready to work down the length of our panel, but on this side you'll notice we have two loops on the end. So on this side we're only going under the top two loops. You're not going into the center of the stitch. We're only going under the top two loops. So let's form our corner. You're going to chain two. You're going to insert into that first row end stitch, work a single crochet. So now we're going to start the repeat again down the length. You're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, insert under the top two loops of the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. So let's do it a couple more times. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. And that is the end of the repeat. So now you're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, Repeat that down your length to the last three rows. I'll meet you there and show you how to finish this side of the afghan. I worked down my panel. This is what it looks like. You're doing that same pattern. And again, when you get to the end of the panel, you're going to see that you have three rows remaining. And again, we need to make our pattern come out where it's one single crochet at the end. So we're going to chain one, skip that next row end stitch, insert into the next row end stitch, yarn over, pull through. You're going to keep that loop on your hook, insert into the next row end stitch, yarn over, pull through, keep the loop on your hook and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. You just single crochet two together and then that makes our pattern come out correctly. So now to end this round, we're going to chain two for the corner and then you're going to come up to the top of that beginning single crochet. So don't get confused with your chain one here. Go clear up to the top of that stitch insert underneath the top two loops and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to fasten off my work, and I chain two, one, two, take my hook, pull that yarn up and out, grab that yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. Now all my ends are going to be hanging, and when I get this afghan done, you're going to weave all your ends in on the wrong side, in and out, through that same color. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our Wool Ease rows, the medium rows. So I have my Wool Ease Rose Heather, that's the medium colored pink. I already have it attached to my hook. So now we're going right back up right where we fastened off and we're going to join in this corner chain two space. 
I'm going to insert my hook into that corner chain two space, yarn over, pull through the chain two space, and pull through the loop on your hook. And it just makes a nice secure joining of your yarn. So to begin row two, we're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet back into the same chain two space, work a single crochet, chain two, and then single crochet back into that same corner chain two space. So our corner is made. You worked a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So now working this round, we're only going to be working in the chain one spaces around. So working this pattern, when I say if you need help, click back on the video. What we're going to be doing is working from corner to corner. So the repeat starts where you're working your single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the corner, and then you're going to repeat the pattern across to the next corner, chain two space, and then repeat around all four sides. So let's begin. You're going to chain one, you're going to skip this next single crochet, insert into that next chain one space, you're going right underneath the chain one space, working around it, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, insert underneath the next chain one space, work a single crochet. So very easy repeat. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next chain one space, work a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet under the next chain one space and around it. Chain one, skip next single crochet, insert underneath the next chain one space, work a single crochet. So I'm going to work this right over to the corner with you. Very simple pattern, chain one, skip the next single crochet and single crochet into the next chain one space. And just work that right across to your corner. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space. So we're almost over to the corner. And if I'm going too fast, you can just pause that video until you catch up and then get to that corner and then restart. So once you're over to the corner chain two space, you're going to chain one and skip the last single crochet. And this is the end of the repeat. So what you're going to do is you're going to click back on the video and you're going to start in the corner chain two space where we work the single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and then you're going to repeat chain one, skip a single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space. And you're going to work that around all three sides. So let me get you started again. Remember when you get to the corner chain two space, you have to chain one and skip that last single crochet insert into the corner chain two space and again this starts the repeat again you're going to work a single crochet chain two and a single crochet into that corner chain two space chain one skip the next single crochet insert underneath and work a single crochet around that next chain one space chain one Skip the next single crochet, single crochet into the next chain one space. Chain one, insert into the next chain one space, work a single crochet. Chain one, 
single crochet into the next chain one space and you're just going to repeat that down to your next corner. So go ahead and work a chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet into your next chain one space, repeat that down to the next corner chain two space and I'll meet you there. I work down the length of my panel. This is what your work should look like. And now when you're over to the next corner, again, you'll have one single crochet and then the corner chain two space. So we're going to chain one. You're going to skip that last single crochet and that is the end of the repeat. So again, you're going to click back on the video and you're going to start in the corner chain two space and you're going to work a single crochet chain two and single crochet into your corner chain two space and then you're going to go ahead and repeat with the chain one skip a single crochet single crochet into the next chain one space chain one skip the next single crochet single crochet into the next chain one space chain one skip the next single crochet single crochet into the next chain one space. So you're just going to repeat this pattern around the remaining two sides. If you need help, click back on the video where we start in the corner chain two space, follow it across to the next chain two space, and repeat that around the remaining two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working around my panel, and I'll meet you at the end of round two. I'm over at the end of round two. When you get to the end of the round, you'll have one single crochet remaining. So to end the round, you're going to chain one, skip that ending single crochet, come up to the top of that beginning single crochet, insert under the top two loops, and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. So round two is finished. I'm going to fasten off my work and again I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see what your work should look like. Again, it's still going to have some curl to it, but this is what it looks like. So nice, pretty, little simple border so far. So now you're going to join your antique white and we're going to go ahead and put our third round of our border on our panel and then our panel will be finished. We're ready to start round three which is our final round of our panel border and we're going to start in the top right hand corner chain two space. So you're going to so I already have my yarn attached to my hook and again you can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn. I'm going to insert into that chain two space and slip stitch through the chain two space and through the loop on my hook which attaches my yarn. We're going to begin and chain one. So now this is the start of the repeat. I'm going to work it from the corner over to the next corner and then you're going to repeat that around all the remaining sides in the same method. So if you need help, this is where you'll click back on the video to where I say this is the start of the repeat. So with this pattern, we're going to be working half double crochets in the corner and we're going to be working double crochets into the single crochets two rounds below. So now we're ready to begin. We're going to yarn over and work a half double crochet into the chain two space, insert into the chain two space, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You're going to chain two, and now we're going to work another half double crochet into this chain two space. Yarn over, insert back into that corner chain two space, work a half double crochet. Your corner is made. We made a half double crochet, chain two, and a half double crochet. 
So now we're ready to begin to work across our work. You're going to yarn over. We're going to work a double crochet into this single crochet two rounds below. Insert into the top two loops of that single crochet. Insert your hook from front to back. You're going to yarn over and pull your hook through and you're working right around the chain one space above and you're just going to work your double crochet. Yarn over, insert back into that same stitch, work a double crochet. So what you're doing is working right around this chain one space. You're not working in front of it, you're not working behind it, you're working right over top of it. So let's do it again. You're going to yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the single crochet two rounds below, one, two, insert under the top two loops, go from front to back, yarn over, pull through, and you're working right around that chain one space above, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Yarn over, double crochet into that same stitch. And that's how you're going to work your double crochet stitches across. Skip the next single crochet and work two double crochet into the next single crochet two rounds below. Yarn over, insert into that single crochet, work two double crochet. One and two. Yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below. One, two, front to back, work two double crochet. One and two. Yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below, insert from front to back, work two double crochet. And again you're working right around that chain one space above. Yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below, work two double crochet. So you're going to continue and skip the next single crochet and work two double crochet into the next single crochet two rounds below. Repeat that over to the corner and I'll meet you there. I'm over at my next corner. This is what the top of your panel should look like. So now when you get over to the next corner, you're going to have one single crochet remaining. And now you're just going to click back on the video and you're going to start where we worked the half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet into the corner. And then you're going to repeat working two double crochet in each of the single crochet two rounds below. So let me get you started again. You're going to skip that next single crochet and then you're going to start the repeat in the corner chain two space. You're going to yarn over, work a half double crochet, chain two, yarn over and work another half double crochet into that corner chain two space. So now you're working down the other side of your panel. You're just going to work two double crochet in each of the single crochet two rounds below. Yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below, work two double crochet. One and two. Yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below, work two double crochet. One and two. Again, you're going to yarn over, skip the next single crochet, insert into the next single crochet two rounds below, and work two double crochet. Continue and work two double crochet in each single crochet two rounds below until you get to the next corner. When you get to the next corner, you're going to skip the single crochet and start all over again with your 
half double crochet, chain two, half double crochet into the corner chain two space, and then you're going to work two double crochet in each single crochet two rounds below to the next corner. Go ahead and repeat that around your remaining three sides and if you need help click back on the video to where we start in the corner and work across to the next corner and that will help you around your panel. So I'll meet you at the end of round three. I'm over at the end of round three. When you get to the end, I just worked my last two double crochet into that last single crochet two rounds below, and we have one single crochet remaining. So we're just going to come over and join with the slip stitch into the top of that beginning half double crochet. So insert into the top of that first half double crochet going under the top two loops and slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off. Again, I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So now I'm going to weave all my ends in on the wrong side, matching the colors through those stitches. So let me zoom out just a little bit. Again, this panel is really big. Your top portion of the panel and the bottom is still going to curl. That's going to bend down and that will get better and better as we add the border onto the afghan. So this is what your panel should look like. Your border should be completed. So let me see if I can slide my panel across so you can see the whole entire panel. So there's the top. We crocheted all the way around the panel down to the bottom and again the bottom's going to curl. So don't let that concern you right now. That will all be corrected when we're finished with the afghan. So this is the end of part one. You made your panel, you cross stitched your design, and you put your border on the panel. So in part two, I'm going to come back and show you how to join your panels together. And then we're going to put the border on the complete afghan to finish the design. So thank you everybody for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do the basic Tunisian stitch, learning how to cross stitch your design onto the top of that work and putting your border on. So thank you everybody for stopping by and make sure you tune in for part two to finish your afghan. Happy crocheting everyone!